Hello, this is Spotlight on Saris. My name is Laura Higgs, and I am honored today to have with me uh, two gals, Roxanne Scrava and Lori Dimitric, who are here to tell us about their pilgrimage to Camina de Santiago in Spain. Right? Correct. Okay, welcome, ladies. Thanks. Thanks for now, having us. Tell me, I know nothing about this, so <laughs> I want to know more. Are you guys, have you been longtime friends, or did you guys meet each other on this for this <laughs> pilgrimage, or what's the scoop? No, we've been friends for quite a while. Okay. We met many years ago. Our children are approximately the same age, oh. and they played sports against each other. So it okay. was a long-term friendship. Long -term. Okay. So how did you hear about this pilgrimage to Camino de Santiago? Well, actually, um, Maggie Oldenkamp has done this pilgrimage many years ago, and she was here from Suris at the time. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that told me about it. I don't remember how Lori heard about it. I think I was just looking into hikes and it came up. And then in about 2009, the movie The Way came out mm -hmm. and I watched it. And then I was like, yes, I, I'm going to do this at some point in my life. Okay. Yep. So tell me the premise of this pilgrimage. The original pilgrimage is meant as a walk from people all over Europe to get to Santiago where the tomb of St. James is and that was the whole purpose is to walk to the Saint, uh, tomb of St. James. Okay. Now it's changed a little bit Okay. but it's still a pilgrimage. It is still has that feel of that old walking and as you walk you can really feel um, the history that's there, not only in the buildings, because Spain is beautiful and has amazing old history in their buildings, but the cathedrals that we had the ability to walk through were absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So how long is this pilgrimage? Uh, everybody does it at their own pace uh, for us because obviously we're not retired yet. Uh, we had a, a certain deadline and um, so we set 34 days to complete it. So we walked between 20 to 40 kilometers a day okay. for 33 days because we did take one rest day. But unfortunately, that rest day was not <laughs> planned. We, we, had, we, we had miscalculated. So when we were getting near the end, we were like, um, oh, we are uh, not going to get to where we need to be in time unless we add some kilometers to our days. And so near the end, when we were literally exhausted, yeah. <laughs> we had to increase it to like 40 kilometers for three days in a row. Oh, my. And that was really challenging. Mm -hmm. That's a long ways to go. And it was very hot. Like when okay. we were there, we only had really two bad days, rain days that were horrible, like driving, driving winds driving and winds. rain and just beating at you for like five hours. Wow. Uh, but the rest was hot. Like we were, it was 34, 36 degrees, full sun, no, no shelter. Wow. Is there a, is there a um, travel agent that takes care of all this or it's just something you guys plan on your own and is there hostels to stay along the way like what do you there how is. do you work this out it's anybody can go anytime mm -hmm. and there's different starting points that you can start at ah. we chose a very traditional trail it's called the francais route and so we started in uh, saint jean du pied uh, which is actually in france and when you start there you have the the, your first two days are just so stunningly beautiful. You walk across the Pyrenees Mountains. Wow. And so you go up and over and down the other side. Um, some people like to avoid the Pyrenees Mountains just because they think it's challenging. And they start in a tiny little town on the other side called Roncesvalles. Roncesvalles. But... Um, no, you go, you go at your own pace. You decide how many kilometers that you're going to walk every day. There's no travel agent involved. Okay. Um, you decide, you know, some people that we walked with actually had no plan. We had to have the plan, uh -huh. obviously, Somewhat. to catch, uh, yeah, <laughs> to catch a, a plane at the end. But right. some people walk it with no plan. Mm. Um, places to stay are varied. Um, with the... Um, passport that you get that allows you to um, walk the trail 
It allows you to have access to accommodations okay. that are called LBARGs. So you can stay in hostels. Okay. LBARGs are typically a little bit cheaper, anywhere from five to 10 euros per night. It gets you a bed and a shower. <laughs> Only a bed and a shower. <laughs> We do not mean walls. We do not mean there is privacy. Not a lot you're, of privacy. You're, in a, you're in a dorm. You are in a co ed. Co ed sometimes. Co ed um, bathrooms. Very European. Very wow. European, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but it has showers and it has a place to do your laundry. Um, it you has you what get you used need. to it. Oh. Yeah. You just get used to it. Okay. Like yeah. you, you um, it's actually kind of cool. You wake up every day in a new town and you end up in a new place and you meet new people all the time and the people that are there are all there for the same reasons and okay. so you sit in and you have communal meals together and you you know have go out and have coffees together and you just you might not see them for two or three days and then they'll pop up somewhere and it's like a family you're just so excited to see them oh. and and we hardly even knew any of the names. We would call them by the, where they were from, Ireland and Hi Ireland, hey, hey, hey South you? Africa, today's bid, you know, and stuff like that. And some people you would meet, and then you'd never see them again. And then you know, some people we met at the very beginning, our very first day, and at, at the very end we saw them. And then even we even flew to Madrid to come home, and we stood, we got went to go and stand in line at one of the the Madrid Palace. And there were those two guys standing there oh. in this lineup at the same time. And it was just like, wow. Like, it was Old just so cool. Week almost, eh? Yeah. Because if you, if you go through something like that with other people, not even at the same, like you say, you only met them here and there, you all have that same feeling. Yes. We call them yeah. our Camino family. Our yeah, Camino we family. discuss them. We call them our Camino family. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, whether you had the opportunity or the privilege to walk with them for only a day or you had them for a whole week, it, everybody was equal. It was just one big family with the same purpose. Everybody is just walking every day. Yeah. You get up every day in your Elberg. You pack up your backpack. Yep. Okay. In the dark. <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> and you have everything in that backpack. This is going to take a little bit of a detour in the conversation, but mm -hmm. everything that you take is in that backpack. They're approximately 35 liter backpacks. And you have a sleeping bag and two, two sets of clothing, <laughs> two pairs of two, socks, two of everything, mm -hmm. uh, one hoodie, maybe <laughs> as little as possible, mm -hmm. because the more weight you, you would think that, you know, it's not that big or whatever, but you really learn along the way. The Camino is really literally and figurative, figuratively about what you carry, what you carry in your life what you carry in your backpack, what oh, you let go of, okay. what you don't need to carry anymore. What you realize, what's necessary. yes, that you can get rid of out of your backpack. You know, you brought four t-shirts, you really only needed two. And along the way, I guarantee you, you will be pitching it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like something so small, but you it, know. The weight is yeah. incredible. You yeah. take the smallest amount of soap, shampoo, or hair conditioner. It, hair conditioner is a privilege. Oh <laughs> yeah. <gosh. laughs> it was a necessity for me, but it was a privilege mm -hmm. that I carried it. Mm -hmm. um, and you carry an extra pair of shoes. So you have your walking shoes, your hiking shoes, and then you have a pair of sandals that will air out your feet for the times when you're not walking on trail, because that's very important. Looking after your feet is so important. <laughs> mm -hmm. So everybody in their pack also has the little pack of foot care products because your feet are just absolutely so important. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're talking so, to a foot care nurse. So yeah, oh, there. there you go. <laughs> I'm totally on board so, with you. So you start in St. John and they yeah. give you this passport and you have to have this passport with you at all times because this is what allows you to stay in the Elbergs. Okay. You, uh, That's why a travel Not just any... Yeah, I, somebody planning it yeah, isn't right. necessary because they right. have it along the way. Not okay. just any tourist can come along and stay at these places. It has to be somebody that's on the, on the trail. Okay. So they stamp it, and then at each place you go, you get it stamped. And then at the end, when you arrive in, in Santiago, they give you a passport, or a, sorry, a certificate a certificate of completion yeah. and a certificate of distance if you actually did the full Camino. Just hold it still for a bit. Um, Good. Because uh, 
You actually only have to do 100 kilometers of this trail to get the certificate. So a lot of people will start in um, Saria. Uh, but we started in St. Jean, France, and we did the full 800 kilometers. Oh and, uh, 800 so, kilometers. Well, that was just the trail. Because, you know, when you get to the cities, when you're walking around huge cities like Leon and Burgos and uh, Papalona. I love, we love Pamplona. Pamplona is lovely. I um, love to go back to Pamplona. They're huge cities. So mm -hmm. to, you're, you're walking, like you, that's all you have. <laughs> so, you know, you we probably- need to get food. Mm -hmm. we, we need to walk. We probably mm -hmm. did over a thousand kilometers for sure. Easily. Wow. Yeah, yeah, easily with, with the amount of- And sometimes we would walk to a grocery store. Some of the albergues that we stayed in would have a little kitchenette that we could cook in. And so sometimes we would go to a grocery store and cook our supper. And other times we just were too tired to even think about that. We found <laughs> the closest <laughs> restaurant that we could, or cafe that we could find. Right, to it's it, it's really an amazing way to see a country. Like you, you, you go through cities and hamlets and villages and farming country and eucalyptus forests and um, we've, we've walked across freeways and desert flatlands and Pyrenees mountains and that other mountain range, Le, was it Leon range? The Leon, the Leon range. range. Yeah. So is this marked very clearly? Like you know where to go? You like follow? how do you get into a city and then, and know you're still on the trail? You're you follow the shell. shell. So oh. everywhere you, you are looking constantly because it's not I'm always scanning. in the same spot. Sometimes it's on a tree, sometimes it's on a, like a, um, a post. A, or a, those, like a cement, monument. those cement monuments. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's just uh, on uh, a sidewalk. Yeah, like um, <laughs> they blow it. Like what is it called? Spray paint. Oh, you spray, spray paint, paint an arrow maybe on a oh. lamp post. Or so you're constantly searching. And in the cities, we it was harder. Um, yeah. A lot of the times they weren't laid out well, and mm -hmm. we were just like you know. You're just looking everywhere, trying to find either the yellow painted arrow. Or something that resembled a the shell. shell, right? And then you, you never knew it. where it was going to be. It could be up high. It could wow. be down low. Yeah. Wow. Just keep looking. Follow the shell. So, did you? One of you, both of you, did you find some some spiritual moments in your <laughs> pilgrimage? Oh yeah. We, there one day. There's one day that that really stands out. It's probably the same the one. Church? Don't start crying. Okay. <laughs> but so we were walking, we were walking, we come across this little village and uh, there was this little church over off to the side, the door was open and, and so many of them are like, all, there's little churches in every yep. town mm -hmm. and they're so quaint. Like oh, they're all, they're all so amazing. Terrible. But anyways, I said, we're walking and I was looking at it and I said, rocks, I, I, I want to go in there. I, I need to go in that church. And she goes, well, honey, if you need to go in, then let's go in. So we went and we walked in and there was these two ladies in there. One was a nun. Mm -hmm. One was just, you know, a parishioner. And they were doing blessings to all of the pilgrims that came across that day. And it was so... Um, it was so emotional that you could just really feel the love and, and the... Um, there was an energy in the air that was just so positive and uplifting and yes. just incredible. And this woman said a prayer to, you know, to each of us and she would take your hand, her, her you know, she's just this little itty bitty thing. And of course, you know, we're, we're, we're tall. tall. Yeah. So she would reach up with her hands and she had her hands in her faces and, and she just, and then she would hug you. But you know, it was, we don't hug anymore like people should. And this lady embraced each of us just and just held us. And you could just feel from her. Like, it was just incredible. Was and then she gave us so each warm. one of these uh, St. Teresa pendants to uh, guide us and to watch over us and to take care of us on the trail. And mm -hmm. we all walked out of there a puddle. Like, we were all just <laughs> bawling. <laughs> we were so, like, just tears were just pouring out. And you couldn't Not saying a stop. word. We couldn't even well, talk. We, couldn't we were even just... Talk. And so about a week before that, Rox had bought this hat, a Camino hat, and she lost it. Uh, somewhere on the trail, it fell off of her backpack. And so we carried on our way this day, and we got to the place where we were staying. And th there's so many of them, I can't even remember their names without remember looking back at, at the maps. But uh, we, were, we were staying right by this church. 
and she was laying up on her bed and I had said that I wanted to go outside and try and find a quiet spa place to call back home. And uh, so I kind of wandered around. I went to the back of the building and around the corner and over to this long stone fence. And there, sitting on that fence, was her hat. No. Yeah. A week later. A week later. After I lost it. There's thousands of people ahead that walked. Ahead of trail. You have to understand, this We're, is ahead of trail, yeah. not behind trail. Ahead yeah. of trail. Yeah. And so I, wow. I grabbed it and I ran. I was so excited. <laughs> I got goosebumps. I know. I was, I was so excited. I ran down the stairs and she's laying on her bed and I just went, look. <laughs> and she's like, my hat. How did you find my hat? Now, whether it was her hat or not, it was the same one. It was one. the identical yeah. hat. Yeah. yeah. So that wow. was that day was pretty special. And then to top it off, we had been walking and looking for paella. She had this oh, thing she wanted I paella, paella in such traditional a, paella. Yeah, and we couldn't find it. We looked everywhere. And this particular town we chose to stay in, where we where I found her hat, <laughs> uh, there was a wedding going on. And outside the wedding, there was this lady that had cooked this huge pan of paella. Mm -hmm. And she walked over to us and asked if we wanted to try it. And we're just yeah, like, this, this day can't paella. get any better. <laughs> it was such Perfect. good paella. That was oh, probably the most, the most touching day, I think, for that me. Was, yeah. yeah, that day yeah. was very but, touching. Yeah. yeah. I would say that the last day was so emotional. I don't know that I can say this without <laughs> crying. You no. might have to take over. The last day was so emotional. It was a combination of wow, we've done this, we're finished this. I don't want this to end because I don't want it to be over because that would mean we had to go home. And we had such a great time doing this together. Mm -hmm. It was such an emotional journey for both of us to be able to do this together. And so as we're walking through town, it's getting quieter <laughs> and quieter. And if you remember, it's a rainy day. Our last day was a rainy day, which isn't always ideal. And we know that we're getting closer to the Compostello, where, which is the church the, where we're headed, our destination. Mm -hmm. And we both walked around the corner, and there it was, just standing right in front of you. It was just... We just stopped dead in our tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were holding hands. Yeah. We were holding point, hands for a while, yeah. walking through the city, because we, we just knew it was the last steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, it was like a culmination of many <coughs> feelings because you were excited, you were proud, you were, you know, overwhelmed, but you were also exhausted and sore yeah. and just tired and wet and cold and like all of these emotions all at once. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just, couldn't even really, we couldn't even really speak. No. We just cried. Yeah, we just cried. We just day. cried <laughs> and hugged. <Yeah. laughs> There was a few other people that had arrived that day as well, so that was really nice that we'd been on trail with at some point. Yeah. Celebrate with them. Yeah. So it was just the two of you that went. No, we had a third friend that came along. Well, I'm um, almost on this book here. Yeah, for, she came along and yeah, uh, third person on there. She's uh, one of our hiking buddies that we we go. We do a lot of hikes and here in Manitoba, here in Manitoba or, or in Alberta. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. And she, when she found out that we were doing this, of course, she wanted to come along. So the Camino was a little bit different for her. For us, it, it was something like it was a um, a bucket list kind of. Um, yeah, journey dream for both of us yeah. to do and and for her it was just you know I want to come come with you guys right mm -hmm. so everybody that's there you know has their own experience and their own reasons and their own they have you have to walk your own Camino you have to go and you have to yeah. do what you want to do you can't try to keep up to people you can't try to stay back if, if you want to walk faster if you want to get up earlier <laughs> and go on your own, but then don't get out of town because she's <laughs> doing this. Cafes are meant to be. <laughs> if you want to walk yeah, alone, you can, you know, like there was lots of days that we, we didn't start together or we, we walked stretches by ourselves. There was one day I know, I, or two days that I walked completely by myself and just met them. Um, mm -hmm. It's perfectly safe. I never ever once felt Is that unsafe. Right, eh? Yeah, Even absolutely. we would walk in the dark. Yeah. And in the morning, in the morning, the morning and you wouldn't hardly be able to see. And I never once felt afraid. Wow. Not you even guys, going through the cities. Did you plan this for quite a while before you 
went? About a, well, I mean, in our minds, we had been planning it for years, <laughs> okay. saying we were going to do it. But let's be honest, not every, um, in our case, mom can just go mm -hmm. when you have children at home. So we did know that we would wait until the kids were um, at least done high school and adults and at the appropriate moment. But yes, it was about a year that we okay. planned it to plan, okay, we are actually going yeah. on this day. We are leaving. We now need to get we now need to figure out what we're doing. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was you have here. To, like register someplace to, to get your passport. No work. Or you when just... you when you get to the place where you start walking, mm -hmm. there is an office where you go okay. and register and get and like your you say, if somebody decides to start where you did, yep. or over the mountains on right. the other side of the mountains, Absolutely. or down the road, yep. mm -hmm. there will be a place for them to pick up. Yes, mm -hmm. to show that they've yep. walked that. They can pick up their shell yep. and they can okay. pick up their. Passport yeah, they give you the shell and on the first day and your passport, and then away okay. you go. You're on wow. your own. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you're not. But you're never. You're never around. alone out there, ever, because no. there's no. always somebody that's walking past you or that's behind you or yeah. uh, that you sit at a ca ca you know cafe with or or that you sup with. You, you talked about having supper at the yes, yes. That communal you stop suppers. The communal suppers were so much fun. Oh, we love them. Yeah. They would, you know, they bring out mm -hmm. meals for everybody and they bring out wine, of course, because it's super cheap over there. Everybody and, just drinks wine like water. Yeah. And, you so know, <laughs> yeah, it was so, it was so great. We, we actually ran into a wine fountain. Oh, did yes, you? Was there's an outdoor Get wine fountain. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go and you take your shell. The tradition is to take your shell. So we actually did take our shell off yeah. and we filled it with the water and we drank from it. It was oh, like yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> because that's where that's it was along it. our trail. <laughs> so we were like, like, well, we can't not. <laughs> what <laughs> what you do? Did it room. We didn't say. We was there. One of the vineyards had put it up there for the pilgrims to use. Wow. Yeah. That was the purpose of it. Vineyards. So. We walked through a lot of vineyards. We walked through a lot of vineyards. Oh, nice. And and we we harvest we got hunted and gathered we called it because over there there was like fig trees and you know yeah, uh, pear, pear trees. trees and so we would walk and we would just hand pick stuff off all the time <laughs> and that would be our snack along the way and wow. sometimes actually some of the local uh, people would put out tables for us and they wouldn't be there but there would just be a table of fruit and bread and they eat Water. a lot of bread over there. They eat a lot they? of bread. And so there would just be this table of wow. things and you could just put a free. donation if you yeah. wanted it. Or, yeah. yeah, some of the neat things there, pe people that have done this trail have come back and volunteered their time. A lot of them will volunteer in the Elbergays, but some of them will be in the middle of nowhere. You could be walking, uh, it's a blistering hot day and there's not very many villages in between. There's You're, you're on a 10 or 12 kilometer mm -hmm. stretch. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you'll kind of come out to a clearing and you'll see, you know, stuff up ahead and, and you're thinking, well, there's something up there and you'll get closer and it will be uh, somebody that has set out a great big spread of food and fruit and drinks and tea and coffee and, and hammocks for you to just sit and have in the middle of nowhere. Really? These are just Lovely. people that are out there just doing this for the pilgrims and wow. it's just, it's amazing. You know, and even just meeting people along the way. Like, I got really sick one day. That was challenging for me. I got some kind of flu, and I had a fever and everything, and I could only walk 18 kilometers that day, and then I was like, okay, I got to go sleep. But people were coming and bringing me medicine and, you know, for my feet, bringing you wraps, and we were handing out blister tape, and, like, it was, everyone just helps each other. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, we're a, you're a family out there, uh -huh. and it, the generosity is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was lovely. We've talked to a few people that we did on trail, were walked with, and um, they go back and volunteer at the Elbert. Oh, do they? Yeah. The coolest thing I have to say right now, though, that has just come up, <laughs> is we this one day we met this group of young people. They would all be about the same age as our children, yeah. and just a great group of kids from Australia and we uh, decided to go out for supper with them because also in Spain, things are not always open around supper time. Sometimes they don't open their restaurants till eight o'clock. So if you've walked all day and it's three o'clock, sometimes they shut There's... down till eight o'clock and you can't get food anywhere. So this was what happened to all of us. Yeah. And so we ended up going out for a late supper with these kids from Australia and we had just a great time with them. Super nice kids got our pictures taken and everything. And then the next day they were gone and we never did see them again, but no. they were young. So they were probably walking a lot faster <laughs> yep. than us. 
But Rox just recently went to Australia. And she's, you tell the story, it's your story. <laughs> I don't know, you were doing a good job and I don't want to cry. So <laughs> Jim and I were supposed to go for breakfast at this place um, and our, our event got canceled. That's the weirdest part. Our event got canceled. We ended up not having breakfast. So we said, well, let's go for a late lunch at this restaurant. It's supposed to be really good. We're sitting there having our lunch. And two of these children came oh, up to met. my table and looked at me and went, Rox, what are you doing here? Wow. Like of all of the cities, of all of the, the restaurants, restaurants in Australia, in all of yeah. Australia <laughs> these two kids came in. Wow. Isn't that incredible? It is incredible. <laughs> How do you uh, uh, goosebumps One in millions. again? Yeah, One I in know. Millions. When she sent me a picture, she's like, "You're never gonna guess who I ran into here." And then she sends me the picture of the, it was a brother and a sister, and I'm like, oh, "How? How did that happen? Yeah. Without you? It's, how? It it's, was it just happened to be an area that <laughs> yeah. they and their family spend every holiday in that area. It would be like us going to Clear Lake every huh? every summer. Yeah, that right. it's yeah. an area that they go and every running into somebody family. from Australia. Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. We talk about our Camino, weird Camino things that happen like this yeah. frequently. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sensing some kind of like spiritual vibrational it thing it going on. And, is 100%. and some, you know, like everybody looks after everybody else. And how do you find your hat a week later forward? <laughs> yeah. Like really. I know. Really. It was incredible. And if not, it, like you say, it was it the same hat? It was an identical hat. I don't know. But the vibrations were there. Yeah. You needed your hat. It doesn't happen with everything. I did That's lose right. three hiking sticks while oh. I was there. <laughs> yeah. I we all, we all lost things. We all left but things you didn't. behind. <laughs> Those are your vibrations left for somebody else. Well, yeah, that's what that we is, said. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the whole, absolutely. that's what they say about the Camino too, is that, you know, if you, if you've lost something or you've left something behind, it's because somebody else needed it more that's than right. you. That's yeah. right. And it, and it did work out yeah, like that. Absolutely. We would come across little goodies. We used to score things all the time. It was it was like, oh, I scored a half a bottle of shampoo. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the we come we come in with it uh, with our finds, and we be all excited. You know, it was just like, what have we done? Like, what's happening to us? We're excited was, about a about a package of ketchup. One day we found butter. You have no idea how excited we were about butter. <laughs> oh, do you remember the day that we walked to our box? So typically a room like what we are in right now would maybe have 20 bunks in it mm -hmm. and you're just all in one big room mm -hmm. well the one day we walk in there's dividers we were so excited about these dividers and we get to our bunk and there is a plug-in right beside your bed you can plug <laughs> no. in your phone yeah we were and so charge your phone we right thought beside we were your in bed. heaven we were yeah. in heaven yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> that was you were the at the hilton ever we, we were, were at the hilton. <laughs> and probably one of the funniest stories was of course when you're staying in a you know uh dorm room yeah. uh, a lot of the men snore so we got, you know, a, a nice fella, a nice fella from uh, originally the UK living in Australia gave me this earwax that I could put in. It helped a lot. Yes, earwax is But the one night we came into our room and the lights were all on. It was 8 o'clock and there was this large, larger man on his top bunk snoring his face off. And I, we were, all, we were both just like... Huh. Oh no, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> and anyways, that was fine. The next morning we get up, it was later, the lights are on, he's still laying there snoring, everybody else is mad at him. You could hear all the huffs of people tossing and turning in the night, you know, and, and we, you know, in the morning you get up and you very quietly pack your bag and you try not to use any lights and you try not to disturb people mm -hmm. that are sleeping and then you get yourself out into the hallway where there's light and then you can kind of see better and then we would, we would, wouldn't talk first thing and then we'd get out the building and on the path and then we would start to talk. And so we got out and I was like, oh, did you hear that man snoring last night? <laughs> All night long. And Rox looks at me, she's like, yeah, but didn't you hear those guys climb through your window? And I'm like, <laughs> what guys? I'm like, the guys who climbed in our window. We were in the second story. We were a second story room. And they climbed in the window, right over a chair, right beside Lori's head. 
didn't hear didn't a thing, notice. but I heard but that snore. man snoring. <laughs> just, just, just Somebody just in her window <laughs> last night. So the Albergues, they close at a certain they time. The they, they lock at 10 o'clock and 10 sharp. And okay. if these guys got there in. at 10 03. Well, luckily they were younger fellas, I guess. I never saw <laughs> them. Um, but actually we did end up finding them. It's another funny story. But he, one of them boosted the other one up to the little Juliet balcony and he pulled himself up and in through the window and <laughs> over the chair in front of my head and got in and then let his buddy in. But that, we never, I never saw them. She didn't even really recognize them. But it was almost near the very end, yeah. weeks later, weeks that we, later. we ended up staying in this other little tiny village in the same albergue as this fella and he starts telling this story about climbing through a window and we're just like that uh -huh. was, it was you <laughs> yeah that it was, was that. My <laughs> mom yeah. so it's just these crazy things that would happen right yeah. because of all of the places to stay along the way uh -huh. and of all the albergues in that town there was be 10 maybe that he was at the same one as us that was very small yeah and he sits down and tells us the story, and we're just like, we know this story. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to tell us this story. Well, she could tell it. I, I could tell, tell it. Through. I could just tell you about the man that That's right. <laughs> Which he knew about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he was complaining about the man who was snoring. I'm sure he did. Story. <laughs> he probably kept the whole place awake. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to stay away from where he's staying the next night. Yeah. Site. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, but obviously he was exhausted. I guess. I guess there yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, and then, sure. and our other friend Leslie had said, "I just about smothered him with my pillow," <laughs> and then this other lady says, "No, no, no, that's not what you do. What you do is you go over and you tap him on the shoulder and then you give him a big kiss." He's not going to go back to sleep again. <laughs> He's just going to be thinking <laughs> He's about that. He's going to be thinking about that it. kiss all night long. <laughs> I can't remember. It was probably a lady that was like 75 years old that told us that. But like, we just howled. Like, what was, wise advice. Why? Wise yeah. advice. You know, that was the other thing that I really was really impressed about the whole trail. It didn't matter if you were 18 or 80. We all walked together, talked together, ate together, laughed, laughed together. together. Wow. It, Drank wine together. Yeah. <laughs> told was, funny stories together. You know, it was... There was no age there was no it wasn't about my group your group thing yeah. it was just this great right. big family yeah I really like the idea of, of stripping away like you guys talked about the stuff in your backpack you don't yeah. need this you don't need that you know. stripping away a lot of that stuff that we sometimes hold dear and that Absolutely. we sometimes think is important which really isn't what's important people mm -hmm. yeah what's important love and yeah. those are the things that were exuded, obviously, along the trail. Yeah, yeah. human yeah. connection is is lost right now, yeah. with you know cell phones and just the how how. And the pandemic didn't help. Thank you very much. Yeah, it but. did not help. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is just because when you're out there, you're not on your phone. You're actually talking to people. You're sitting down at a cafe and enjoying your coffee. There's no rush, you know. We found that, you know, when you're going to go sit down at a restaurant, just know that you're going to be there a few hours because they might bring you a menu in half an hour. Like, if they're just so laid back. <laughs> and we really noticed that they, a lot of the time they would say to us, you know, you must be Canadian. You're, you know, you're always in a hurry or you, you, you drink your yeah. drinks really fast or, <laughs> or, you know, things like that. And we're just like, oh. You know, something we never really, you know, you don't pay attention no. to until you're immersed among a different audience. And how they can pick out your culture because of that. Yeah, well, wow. when you go to a restaurant in Spain, they, you sit down and eventually someone comes to your table to take an order. Sometimes you have to go to the bar if you're really impatient. You have to go into the restaurant and to the bar and get your own drink and come back. Here, we are so focused on service and mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. that we expect somebody to come to our table within 30 seconds of us sitting down pretty much and that yeah. does not happen there nope they will eventually come and ask you <laughs> if you want another drink but it will probably be an hour or more later but if you look at the tables where the locals are sitting it is lovely they are sitting there they are engulfed in conversation they are just socializing yes there's a drink in front of them they don't have their cell phones out no wow. they're not they're they're talking their drink is top they're up. very social very infrequently mm. yeah yeah they're really? just very social that's what yeah. they're doing they're there to have a conversation and yeah. 
and a meal not wow it was really hours. nice to disconnect yeah. yeah i bet i bet yeah because yeah our restaurants they want you in served and out because they they can serve two yeah. more people oh, at that yeah. table but they're not promoting oh, no. that they're promoting the camaraderie that you're having at yes, the table. yes that's right you yes. sit there for four hours and it's fine yeah they wouldn't care no wow. nope <laughs> wow that's great yeah, yeah it was very nice great. that way and even when we came home I know Lori and I both talked about this, how things kind of changed a little bit for us when we did finally come home. And um, both of us did a bit of purging mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. There was a bit of purging that happened. There were some things that went to thrift stores. Yep, I can see that. A lot of thoughts yep. that yep. change. It does, yeah. Even just eating, you know, like we... When you're on the trail, you, you get up in the morning, you go, or the night before, you go to the grocery store and you figure out what you're going to eat the next day and you take one of this and one of that and one of this. And that's all you want to carry mm -hmm. because it's heavy. Because you're going to carry is, it. An orange is heavy. Mm -hmm. An orange is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> A box of juice is heavy. Mm -hmm. And so you learn that to take just what you need mm -hmm. and that it'll sustain you. Mm -hmm. There's a saying on the Camino that the Camino provides, and it does in every aspect. Wow. Whatever you need you find. Yeah, we were never hungry, hungry. I mean, with I was anything. always hungry, but yeah. But but with anything, never, right? Yeah, everything. It just, yeah. it just provides. What about water? Was there water along the way? Yeah. They, really cool, actually. Most of the towns have these ornate water fountains everywhere. Okay. So you could refill. You only have to take one of those. You okay. refill every That's plenty. You go yeah. and fill it up with this town or that town. And a lot of the maps will tell you if there's a long stretch of, of going without water so mm -hmm. that you can kind of plan. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, there's so many <laughs> water. We would stop at every cafe that we possibly could, and we'd had cafe con leche or cerveza con limon or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, <laughs> mm -hmm. we stopped at every place that we could and just enjoyed it. Yeah. But so then did you pick up, up some of the language? We had to. Oh, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah you do have to learn how to order food and ask for directions or, you know, or just basic okay. communication. But they're pretty good. Pretty good at um, sometimes, you you know, what you thought you were getting, you weren't. But no. it was okay. It yeah. all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we did learn. Learn in Spanish is different in Spain than it, it is, is in Mexico. In Mexico. Uh -huh. So we learned that because the first day I asked where the van was, and they were like, "The what?" And it's Cerifio in Spain for bathroom. Not baño. Not baño. Don't ask oh. for a baño. Don't ask, ask for a baño. Services. Ask for the services. Services. Because oh, okay. they looked at. But then we got to a different region, and, and they did, again. and they changed again. Mm -hmm. okay. So every yeah. region is different over there right. too. So. Yeah. Right. That was kind of neat to see how it all changed, the landscape changed mm. as you went along, right? Because they're all different. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sounds like a really exciting time. 34 days you guys crammed that in, my gosh. Yeah, we did cram a lot into 34 days. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And yet it was so relaxed at the same time. Yeah. Mm. I never felt like we crammed anything in. Now, how did you get to the, your starting point? You, you land in where? Did you land we in Madrid? We flew into or? Paris, and we spent okay. three days in Paris. Mm -hmm. It was disgustingly hot. It was very hot. Was they were all in a, the whole place was in a heat wave. While we heat wave. There. And then what we, time of year was that? Yeah. It was September oh, to okay. October. Mm -hmm. And we thought by October we would need fleece and long mm -hmm. pants and we did not ever did not. hardly, I don't think two days maybe. Wow. But uh, we flew into Paris. We stayed there for three days and we took one of those little commuter planes, uh, Air France, to Barats, France. And from there we got on a train that took us to Saint Jean de to Pied, Pied, yeah. Pied, Pied de Port. Yeah, Pied de Port. And we stayed overnight there one night, and then the next day, whoosh, gone. And then in Santiago at the other end, um, we were able to take a train to Madrid and catch our flight home from Madrid. Okay. Yeah, because we wanted to see a different city on our way home, mm -hmm. so we flew out of Madrid instead. And we did end up going to the coast, because um, you can continue on from, from Santiago. People do walk it. We would have loved to have walked it. Um, we didn't have time, and my foot would not allow me to. As it turns out, I fractured it. And so um, I was just, just like, I was just done. I'm like, yeah, I, can't, we, I can't go any farther. Like, wow. So we, took we, a, we got on a bus tour, and we went, and it took us to the coastline, wow. and it was amazing. It was yeah, just it was beautiful. beautiful on the coast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, what a great thing to do personally for yourselves, for relationally with your friends, 
um, you know, and just good for, for everybody all around because you come home with this new sense and like you say, you come home and you purged and you, but you came home with all these memories and everything, which makes it so much better for our family. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, like I really, I really believe that. You, you grow as a person for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, thank you ladies for coming in to tell us about this. Oh. This sounded like such an exciting we time. We could sit here and talk <laughs> all, we yeah. could talk for hours about I it. I bet. I we bet. will do another one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, and come on in and share, share with us for sure. For sure. And thank you very much for bringing all the extra things that you brought to show us what yes. it was like and oh. what all, that's what you needed for 34 days. That's I just it. find that's that your life for 34 amazing. Days. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. We had to hand wash all our clothes every two days. Yeah. 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 It was an experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I ever plan on that, though, it would have to be open-ended. I don't think I could do it in 34 days. But a lot, mo a lot of people do. Yeah. Open-ended yeah. is good. It, yeah. yeah. Open-ended would be the best way. It to would do be it. the best way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it for absolutely sure. would be. For sure. But there is an option for people who don't have that amount of time. Uh, and we ran into a family who was doing this. Our little girl with the braids. They were doing the first two weeks. Yes. And then they were going home, and next year they were coming back and finishing it oh. after that. Oh, neat. Okay. The youngest girl, little girl on the trail was five, yeah. and she was walking the whole thing. Yeah, she was walking the whole thing. With her, with her uh, aunt and uncle, I believe. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't her parents, but she was just this little girl, mm, yeah. just this little girl with wow. a little backpack. Wow. And she was so full of life. Yep. Just mm -hmm. loved this. You know, I couldn't believe it. Interesting, a, a, a five-year-old would be on a, a trail that would be a life-changing experience for the rest of us, and she's only got five years in. Yeah. So imagine the things that she learned along the way. I oh, imagine. Um, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, um, Roxanne and Lori, for coming in and sharing that with yeah. us. We really, really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you for joining us here at Spotlight and Service. <laughs> Please stay warm and have a great